right, we're here with part six of the CG shader tutorial. And in this one, we are going to go over adding specular highlights. So what we have here we're starting with is uh, the vertex lit shader that we had before. And it was just uh, you know, duplicated and uh, called vertex lit with specular this time. So we're still going to be dealing with, uh, with only vertex lit. Uh, switching over to uh, pixel shaders is actually really simple and we'll hit that up in the next one. We'll convert all these shaders over so we have both vertex lit and pixel. So what we need to do for specular highlights is uh, we're, uh, we're actually gonna need to calculate a few, uh, a few things here and we're gonna add in ambient lighting as well. So first thing is uh, let's have a quick look at the formula. So this is basically what we wanna calculate for the specular highlight. This is uh, going to be the incoming light times the material specular color. And this is something we're going to set. It's uh, usually white, but uh, you can make it any color you want for different effects. And then what we want here is uh, the reflected light direction times the view direction to the power of the shininess constant. So let's break these parts down. So incoming light, that's just going to be the light color times the attenuation of the light. Now we didn't deal with attenuation in the vertex lit shader. If you remember when we uh, when we calculated the diffuse here, we just uh, you know because we're dealing with directional lights, attenuation doesn't really matter because there it's always going to be one. Um, but once we start dealing with point lights, attenuation becomes important because as the light gets further from the vertex that we're dealing with, then uh, attenuation will be a little bit smaller. So we're, even though we're only going to be dealing with directional lights, we're going to introduce attenuation here as well. That way this code will be ready when we go over to point lights. Uh, so we have the material specular color, and uh, again, that's just going to be a constant. We'll make that a shader property, and uh, you'll be able to modify that uh, right in Unity, picking your color. And uh, here is an interesting one, the reflected light direction. So... Um, what we're going to do is use the built-in reflect method to get this. And uh, I'm just going to open up a couple of images here so we can uh, get an idea of what this looks like. And here we go. So this is the first one here. So this is just from the NVIDIA uh, tutorial series on shaders. So what we have is uh, what they call the incident ray and you can see it's uh, you know, directed from the eye to a surface. We need the surface normal for this and then this reflected ray is what we actually want. So the reflect method will actually take in the incident ray and this normal and give us this reflected ray. So what we have is, this is a gorgeous drawing isn't it? Uh, that's what you get for trying to draw with the trackpad. Um, what we have is we have the normal and we have the light direction, but you'll notice the incident ray is coming in and our light uh, direction vector is actually facing the opposite direction. So it's real easy. We're just gonna uh, throw a negative sign in front of it to reverse the direction. That way we'll be able to take our negative light direction and our normal and get the reflected ray. Okay, so next up we have the view direction. And uh, Unity has a handy function, world space view dir, that will uh, give us the view direction. So that's nice and simple. And the shininess constant is just going to be a float. So this is something, again, that will be, uh, you, you would edit in the inspector. And we'll, we'll start off with a value of about 10 or so. All right, so let's go ahead and add the properties first. So first up, uh, specular color. You know, we've seen all this before, so we're going to run through these quick. Uh, it's just going to be a color property. We'll call it specular material color and we'll make it white to start with. And then there's our shininess property. And of course we're going to want to add the uniforms over here so that we can actually use them and they get populated by Unity. So our vertex input and our fragment input aren't going to change at all. We don't have to do anything with those. Those are going to stay exactly as is. Now where we're going to start to see some changes is, uh, is around here. So we've got the normal direction just like before. We're using the normal to world method. And if you remember, we just, it's just a little macro that we stuck in the include file. 
and we get the world space light direction here. So we already had all this before, so we're going to start adding in some uh, the specular calculation now. So again, first thing, if you remember, what we wanted to do is we want to get the attenuation of the light. So now directional lights, they're as I said before, they're always normalized, so they're always going to have an attenuation of one, and that's totally fine. That's all we're going to be using for this, but let's calculate the attenuation anyway, just so when we're ready to start adding point lights, which actually will uh, will not have a normalized uh, direction, it will then be ready to go. So you can see the calculation is one divided by the length of the light direction. So as it, it gets further away, this will actually be a smaller and smaller number and the light will have less and less effect. Uh, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and normalize our light direction. And again, just to reiterate, the light direction is already normalized here because it's a directional light, but once we're using point lights, it won't be. And we're going to want that normalized. So let's just get in the habit of doing this so that we can swap between directional lights and point lights at will. All right, so we have to add the attenuation into our, uh, our calculation here. And what we'll do is in our diffuse calculation, we'll just add multiply by the attenuation. And that'll be nothing. It'll just be one for directional lights, but it will reduce the diffuse uh, contribution for point lights that are further away. Okay, so now we're going to get to some fun stuff. So, first thing we need is the view direction. So the view direction comes from that world space view dir function. So this is an easy one. So we're just going to call world space view dir, and this method is defined in the Unity CG, CG Inc file. You can give it a look. It's a pretty simple method. It's just giving us, uh, just taking that uh, vertex and translating it to world space view direction. And next thing we're going to want to do is get our specular reflection. Now, we have to be a little bit careful here because when we're dealing with the specular reflection, we only want to deal with lights that are actually in the, on the correct side, that are actually lighting the surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to check to make sure the light source is on the correct side before we do anything. So that's why we're just going to declare this here and we'll deal with it here. So uh, what we're going to do is if n.l is greater than 0, that means the light is, is a positive number, so the light is on the correct side. We're going to go ahead and calculate specular in here. And if it's not, then uh, we're going to just go ahead and set the specular reflection to no contribution for black. Okay, so actually uh, calculating it, if you remember the function that we were dealing with before, I'll just paste it on here so we can uh, we can look at it while we make this. It is this. So let's start out and, uh, and calculate some stuff. So first thing, uh, let's just, I'm, I'm going to pull, instead of doing this all on one line, we're going to break it out into pieces so it's easier to follow along with. So first thing is going to be the reflection. And if you remember, we have this reflect function, and uh, you know, just like we saw in the images, we, uh, we're going to take the negative light direction and our normal direction, and that's going to give us that reflection. So next up is going to be the r.v calculation. And this one uh, you know, looks a, a little bit hairy at first, but if we, uh, if we look at it closely, we'll see this is basically the r.v right here. So we're dotting our reflection in our view direction, and we're just going to do a max of zero and this dot just so that we uh, ensure that we have a positive number. And then if you remember, we were taking uh, right here, we're, we're going to raise that to the power of the shininess constant. So that's where the pow function comes in. So it looks a little bit hairy because it's three nested functions, but in actuality, it's really not that much happening there. So our specular reflection calculation now, we can finish it off. It's going to be equal to the attenuation times the light color, and that's our incoming light contribution. We have our specular color, which is this constant, and then we calculated r dot v to the shininess, so that's going to be this part. So that's it. We've got specular reflection in there.
uh, mentioned earlier that uh, we were also going to going to add the ambient light in because uh, I mean Unity's render settings have the ambient light in there, so we should be taking that into effect when we're dealing with lighting. So let's go ahead and add that in. So ambient light uh, just uh, it's a constant that Unity fills for us. It's a Unity light model ambient. And we just want the RGB component of that, and we're going to multiply it by our, by our color, because we do have our, our tint color up here. And we want to take that into effect. And this is where you can start to play with stuff. Maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you just want to use the ambient light, as opposed to multiplying it by your tint color. And you can uh, get some different effects that way. And then, finally, we're going to calculate the color. And it's just ambient plus diffuse plus specular. And that is all there is to it. So as long as we did this all correct, this will compile, and it does. So right now we have no contribution because I didn't comment this line out yet. This is still using just the diffuse. So I wanted you to be able to see the difference here. So here's our directional light, and I'm just going to move that around, and you can see that uh, this is what a standard diffuse looks like. So clicking on our material here, uh, I'm gonna change the diffuse color to something a little more obvious. Like, let's make it. Uh, oh, let's leave the diffuse color. Actually, I'm gonna change the specular color. Okay, specular color of bright red. That'll work. And shininess will leave it 10 for the moment. So now let's comment this out. Okay, so you can see we have specular highlights now. So let's move this. Rotate our directional light. You can see with with a a plane, it's really not very useful nor is it useful for uh, you know, a cube, something like this. Anything where the, where the face is just flat, then uh, yeah, you really don't need specular highlights on something like that. Where the specular highlight starts to you know, really take form is on any object that has some, uh, some curvature to it, like the sphere over here. You can see we're getting the highlight in here, and we also get it on this. So you, as we move it around, we get that nice little red highlight in there. And then we can, of course, play with our shininess here, see what different values look like. So let's see what a point 0.1 looks like. And uh, you can see it's, with vertex lit, uh, specular oftentimes doesn't look great. It's, it's not horrible, but it's uh, not the prettiest thing. Once we make that pixel, it'll be a little bit better. And let's try a high value and see what that looks like. And move our directional light around. And you can see it just has a little bit more of a spread, and it's really affecting these flat uh, planes over here in the cube. And just to compare again, here's our diffuse. And we don't have that nice specular highlight anymore. So that is all there is to it. So lesson six complete. Next time in lesson seven, we will go over converting these last couple shaders. So we had our vertex lit and our vertex lit specular. And uh, we're going to take those and just make those pixel it and pixel it specular. And uh, you're going to be surprised how easy it is. All right, thanks for watching.